pumpkins. It's me. Uh, basically, this is my Christmas kitchen, which is why I'm wearing the hat. And today we're going to be making absinthe flavored fruitcake, all thanks to Jerry. Because I decided to make some Christmas fruitcake this year, and when I was reading through the ingredients, I thought, you know, if I substituted absinthe for rum, this could actually be pretty good. So I found... Ironically enough, a recipe for French fruitcake, which is considered a light fruitcake and doesn't need to be, you know, set for days. And that's what we're going to be making tonight. So we started off with this. And we have currants, pineapple, and golden raisins. And they're all currently soaking in about a half a cup of absinthe. We're going to let that sit for a while, and then uh, we're going to see what happens. Well, 24 hours have passed, and our fruit has soaked down very nicely. And I've drained off the extra absinthe, because I'm going to be using that later on when I make the actual cake better. Right now, we're going to add two tablespoons of flour to this to kind of basically give it a light coating, and then I'm going to start making up the batter. Tablespoon one... Tablespoon two. And where is Kevin B when I actually need him? I ask you. Okay. Okay, we're gonna finish this, put that off to one side, and then start making the batter. Okay. Okay, true story. What's going on here is we are creaming the butter, the sugar, and the honey for the cake. Also true story, this lovely uh, stand mixer, not mine, belongs to Lyndon. He bought it when he got diagnosed with diabetes and decided to become the pie maker and learned how to make some amazing low carb cakes, cookies, and biscuits. The man still makes some of the best damn cheesy biscuits in the world. So we're gonna let that cream down and then add the next set of ingredients. Okay, we have now added uh, now, along with the butter, sugar, and honey, we've added two eggs, light cream, dark rum. Well, actually, for our recipe, we've added two teaspoons of absinthe that have been soaking in the fruit. Uh, vanilla extract, all-purpose flour, and one-half teaspoon of baking powder. This is about ready to go into the pan and uh, be baked. Also, useful thing, when you're doing this... Don't automatically set it on high when you've added a whole bunch of dry ingredients because it winds up all over the floor. Yeah. Now that we've added all of the boozed up fruits and the walnuts, it is ready to go into our greased... We need to back that up. Our greased and floured pan, and then it'll go in the oven for a bit at 325 until it's ready to come out and a toothpick comes out of the center clean. Fingers crossed, people. This is going to be the tricky part. And there you have it. Prepared dough in the pan and ready to go in. And I know that you're not supposed to eat raw dough, especially if it has eggs in it, but you know what? I'm getting this from the stirring hook. Oh my god, this is going to be good. Mm. And there's the final version. Uh, it took about 15-5 minutes to bake in the oven, and it smells amazing. We're letting it cool, and then we're going to try a piece in a bit. Yeah! And now, the taste test. This is good. Jerry, you're getting a loaf. Mm. Perdicua DJ. This is Melanie. Merry Christmas. Mm. 